Hello everyone, my name is Lisa and I'm the Vade Vegan because I'm Vietnam and I'm vegan and today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. I'll talk more about Squarespace later on in the video. So as you can tell, this is a what I eat in a week and it is a long one. So if you haven't gotten a snack or a, a bevy, give this a pause, go get your snackle and come hang out with me. I am starting off with a grass jelly matcha latte. This is part of the grass jelly three ways video that I filmed. Um, I guess it was the last video that I posted, but um, as you can see, I had it for breakfast. It was a sweet, delicious breakfast with milk, grass jelly, sweetened condensed coconut milk and matcha. And because I didn't have enough sweets, I decided to also have a vegan chocolate chip cookie that I baked a couple days ago as well. Then for an actual meal, I decided to use some of this seitan. This is the wash flour seitan that I've been experimenting. I made a half batch and I added some spices and chippy flour to this one to give it like kind of a lighter texture. So this is after the rest in the broth overnight. I decided to pull it apart, get those shreddy shreds to see how the texture is. Then for the main part of the meal, I'm reheating some leftovers of Hot Pot, um, another recent TikTok slash Instagram video that I posted. I mixed it with half of the vegan chicken broth that I had the seitan just kind of chilling in because this hot pot was very spicy. It just wasn't super good on the digestive system. So I decided to add some cheese. This is Nabati cheese. This is the vegan non-dairy Nabati cheese that I buy locally here in Hamilton from Coven. And I added a bunch of extra vegetables, some mushrooms to these noodles because there were already some noodles sitting in there. Then for a snack, I had some mango, some dried mango from Casco. And then for dinner, Eddie decided to make burgers. He wanted some burgers, so we got some impossible ones. Now these ones look really bloody and really, really weird, but I swear, they's vegan. Eddie really likes them, so we've gotten a, a bulk case of them from Coven in Hamilton. So my dinner is a burger with Saigon style sriracha. It's like kind of sweeter than regular sriracha that you find here uh, with mustard and some of these Kumado tomatoes. And I added some vegan mayo on top of my bun and that was my burger. Then for dessert, I had the grass jelly with strawberries, soy milk, and a little bit of sweetened condensed milk for a little tasty tasty. Again, that was from my grass jelly video. Now we're on Tuesday. So on Tuesday, I started my day with some tomato toast. This is actually the toast that I um, have been working on the pandemie that is a video upcoming soon and then i decided to soak some chickpeas although i didn't get to cooking it until the next day so you know just remember in the back of your mind these chickpeas come back then for a bit of a hydration break i made some tea and then promptly forgot about it for several hours so instead i also had some coconut water i did end up drinking that tea later but um it was like a couple hours later then for lunch i decided to make a stir fry so i'm using some leftover mushrooms that i had from hot pot um i added a bunch of mushrooms a little bit of oil in there and i just stir fried things just to get them a little juicy you know getting the the water evaporated out and then i added some of the torn seitan then for the sauce i added some soy sauce vegan fish sauce mushroom broth powder and water to a bowl and then i added it to these mushrooms and the seitan some greens these are some uh leftover hot pot greens from a couple days ago i think they're snow pea tips um then i added a pack of udon added the rest of the saucy ingredient-y type thing and i just kind of stir fried until the noodles kind of cook through or loosened up and everything is nicely wilted and you know intermingled spoon into a bowl and that was my very satisfying lunch and by lunch i like loosely mean lunch because i'm pretty sure this was around like four or five o'clock so it wasn't quite dinner but it wasn't really lunch either then for a snack i had some chocolate chip cookies that i made a couple days ago i'll link it in a recipe down below um and then for a snack i had some bad monkey popcorn this is the nacho flavor and the dill pickle flavor and then i guess i was feeling very snacky because i had more <laughs> snacks i had some kefasa tortilla chips and some salsa Now it's Wednesday and now those chickpeas come back. I like to soak my chickpeas with some salt and water just to like reduce the, the fartiness of the beans. So then I add it to my instant pot with some fresh clean water and then I pressure cook for about 15 minutes so they're nice and soft. Then I had coffee. I've been using French press coffee. I don't know, sometimes when I get new stuff, I just like really wanna use it right away. So I ordered the French press in anticipation of running out of Chemex filters, but then I still have some Chemex filters and I see them on sale now at Whole Foods, which is such a bummer because I was like, oh my God. But here we are, I'm using French press. It is less waste overall. So I'm having fun playing around with this new brew style. So I added some coconut creamer, some French press, getting some of my multivitamins, more coconut water, and a little bit of omega-3 plant DHA uh, D3 stuff. It's, made, it's vegan, um, not all of them are vegan. So double check that yours are plant derived and not fish derived. And then I also decided to make a grilled cheese. I used the leftovers 
of this Nabati cheese cheddar stuff. Although I wouldn't recommend it for a grilled cheese because the cheese sort of just disintegrates. It's still pretty good, pretty tasty. I would prefer it on cheese, like on like pizza instead, or I kind of want to like put it on the outside of the bread to get like a cheesy crust on the outside. That sounds like a good time. Then on the side, I had some tomato cut up with a little bit of salt and pepper. After I finished my grilled cheese, I was craving a little sweetness. So I uh, decided to cut up my last orange out of the fridge. And this is a Kara Kara orange because it's the end of citrus season. And uh, it was a good time. I gave half to Eddie, so I only ate half, but it was very sweet, very tasty. It was a very good time. I've been really feeling the fruit lately. I think it's like the warmer weather that has me really feeling the fruit. So once the 15 minutes have elapsed on the chickpeas, I let them natural release for about like 10, 15 minutes. And then I scoop out the scum, the foam. I don't know what you call that. I guess it's scum. and then. I drain the chickpeas. You can save the aquafaba and freeze them in ice cubes, but I already have some in the freezer, so I don't really need to save more. If you want to have aquafaba, that's that's what you can do with it. And then I decided to make some hummus. So I added some garlic cloves, tahini, and olive oil. Although in retrospect, I should have added more olive oil because the result of this hummus was quite stiff. I would like it to be runnier and add more oil. I usually add a little bit of salt too, but I think I forgot. I think I added it later on. No, I definitely added salt. So I use the tamper, tamp it all down, get the Vitamix all up in there and scoop it out. The last time I made hummus, it was like really nice and runny because I added um, a bit of aquafaba to the blender and I added a lot more oil. So it was like nice and runny and I wish I had done the same this time. Then for a snack, I had some of these vegan Miss Vicky's that I found at Costco. They're like the spicy dill flavor. Very, very good. And I had the last of the coconut water. Then for dinner, I decided to make a recipe from Lisa Kitahara from Okonomi Kitchen. She made this like mayo corn udon that sounded really, really good. So I decided to make it as well. I added edamame for extra protein. And so her recipe is linked down below, but it uses both butter and mayo, obviously vegan. Um, and I don't have Kewpie mayo, so I made like a sweeter sort of mayo. And then there's like a couple sauce substitutions, but holy moly, this was so good. I didn't realize that like mayo as a sauce would be a good time. Honestly, I didn't even really like mayo until I went vegan. I didn't like mayo before I went vegan. And then I don't know what it was after I went vegan, but I was like, yeah, I'm team mayo now. So I highly recommended this. I added white pepper and some furikake, which is like a seaweed and sesame mix. And this was very, very good. Would recommend. All right, it's Thursday. I think today I was feeling really burnt out. So I made some tea, wasn't really feeling the coffee, added some soy milk, and that was my morning beverage. And I think a couple hours later, I was like finally feeling like I could eat something, but again, I wasn't really super hungry. So I decided to have a protein smoothie. I used the Vegas Sport Mocha with some sprout chocolate milk. Uh, that's the one made out of peas. So it's like higher in protein. And that was my first meal of the day. And I think that lasted me about another, I think two to three hours before I started making dinner. Eddie requested that I make some sort of Alfredo pasta. And so I looked up a recipe from, I think this is from Gimme Some Oven for an Italian seasoning blend. I put it all in a jar. So it uses a combination of like sage, marjoram, oregano, basil, you know, your usual suspects for an Italian blend of seasoning. So I can link that recipe down below if you'd like. Regular dairy version of Alfredo is mostly just like butter, cream, and cheese. And since I'm not using cream or cheese, I mean, or butter, I have vegan butter and then I decided to make a roux. So I heated up the butter and then I added some flour, cooked that flour until it thickened a little bit and whisked that in. And then I whisked in a, um, probably about like a cup up to a cup and a half of unsweetened pea milk. This is again from Sprout. And then I added some Nabati cheese. This is the remaining Nabati cheese that I had left. And then I added the Italian seasoning. What I'm using here is Violife cheese since I had this Parmesan and I just put it in the cheese grater wheel. I've had this for so many years and I got this just after I went vegan, I'm pretty sure. And I was like, well, what am I gonna use this for? But it has made shredding Parmesan really, really nice to get those like really nice, thin, fine shreds of Parm. And this is the Violife Parm. So it's salt. It's not super, super funky, but it's pretty close and I quite like it. Add in salt, add in your pasta, boil for whatever it tells you on the package. I also added some vegan chicken consomme here. This is the Osem kosher vegetarian chicken flavor blend here. I just added a little bit just to give it more chickeny type flavor. Then for protein, I decided to cook up the rest of the seitan and I just kind 
I pan fried this in my cast iron pan. To add a bit of vegetable green goodness, I used the rest of my snap peas that I had. I think I would have actually used more um, if I had more because of the ratio of vegetable to pasta is not as much as I would like. Add a bit of green, add a bit of freshness. Twas really good. I had taken about half cup or a third cup. I can't really remember. I had taken a portion of the pasta water to thicken the sauce, but it didn't really thicken. If anything, it just made it slip off the pasta more. I think in retrospect, I would avoid doing that since I don't think it had enough starchiness to it to like really help with the pasta, making it kind of stick to the pasta better. This was pretty good. I think if you guys want, I can develop a proper recipe. This was just me kind of like throwing stuff together. Yeah, I can measure the next time if you so desire. Eddie said this was pretty good. It reminded me of like Michelina days, but not quite as cheesy, pretty tasty. So since I made that pasta around five or six o'clock, I mean, that's like, I guess, early dinner, but I would say like seven or eight, I got kind of hungry again. And so I started out by making a drink for myself. I made this seed lip sort of guava beverage. I don't really know what to call it. Um, as I've mentioned in previous videos, I no longer can drink alcohol because my doctor suspects that I'm allergic to alcohol because it gives me hives. So I've been making dry cocktails, which has been a lot of fun actually. So I'm using seed lip guava and I made a lemongrass and curry leaf simple syrup. And it's actually been really, really tasty. I topped it off with some club soda and that was my bevy. It was very good, very tasty, not too sweet, especially with the club soda. And then as a late night snack plate, I had some cucumbers and hummus. And this was actually the night that I was hanging out with uh, Christy from Plant Based Christy and Two Market Girls on our little Zoom call. I had some of these peach rings and these sour cream and onion rings that are vegan that I found at Winners. They are so, so good. And Andy and I demolished that bag together. All right, it's Friday. For my morning coffee, I decided to make some of the instant coffee back from the beginning of quarantine that I got in anticipation for making tons of Dalgona. But of course, as soon as I finished the other container of instant coffee, I kind of got sick of Dalgona. So I had this giant container of it. And so I decided to make a little bit of iced coffee. And then by the time I was hungry, we ended up going to get groceries. So we decided to try out the Impossible Whopper. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. For those watching at home, we just dumped a big glob on the side, right beside the burger instead of on the burger. It does look like a veggie burger, but it tastes really good. I like the charred flavor that they put on it. It's a very basic burger, but it's a solid burger. I like it. I would say a solid like eight out of 10. It's not a fantastic burger. It's just a solid one. This is expensive though. They were like $7 each, $7.50 I think. I also got fries. I feel like it's another solid option for I mean, road trips specifically, like rest stops, usually have like a Burger King or McDonald's or something like that. I feel like Burger King is pretty common, like the on routes. Yeah, I do like Burger King. They had a veggie burger before that was pretty solid. So I think we had that burger around 2, 2.30, and then around 4.30, 5 o'clock, I was hungry again. So I decided to prep some hot pot. So this is some hot pot base that I found at the Asian market. And to the pot, I have added some onion and ginger. Just for anyone who is uh, double checking, that hot pot base does contain palm oil. So some people would consider that not vegan and would consider that plant-based. You decide what is best for you. Yeah, just FYI. So here I'm washing some gray konyaku noodles. These are some shirataki noodles or yam noodles. They're made with like this specific kind of yam that has like a really bouncy consistency. They're also considered like zero calorie noodles. I don't really care about that. I just like the texture. It has like a very seaweedy, fishy, seafoody flavor just fresh out of the package. So I generally like to rinse the noodles 
I rinse them really well so that it kind of gets rid of that stink. And then I cook from a cold pot of water. I read somewhere that it sort of helps the noodles absorb more water so they get even bouncier. And I really like the results so far. So the hot pot broth should look like this. The onions should be cooking through, kind of imparting their sweetness into the broth. And I like to enhance the sweetness with a little bit more palm sugar actually. So I add about one tablespoon of palm sugar and I find that balances the sort of bitterness of the spices. And it kind of adds a nice body and rounds out the flavor of the hot pot broth. So once the broth is ready, I strain everything out and then I put it onto the gas stove in the living room and then I have all of my other prepared vegetables. So I have bok choy, mustard greens, snow pea shoots and mushrooms and then the puffy tofu, bean curd noodles from the thicker sizes to the thinner sizes and shirataki noodles. If I was making other noodles I would par cook or like cook those noodles separately as well and I would put them in a separate pot so that they don't have to really cook as long in the hot pot broth and don't impart their starch in the broth. I don't know why I've been so into the hot pot lately. I've had hot pot at least once or twice a week for the past two weeks. It's just been really nostalgic and I get a lot of veggies in, I got a lot of noodles and it's just very spicy and tasty. This is a very Szechuan heavy seasoning pack and it is so, so addictive and so good. Um, and to have as a drink and as a cooler for my Szechuan spice and numbing tongue, I had a San Pellegrino Pomelo soda. It's sweet, it's a little bit bitter and it goes well with the hot pot and it was delicious. Um, I also had some hot pot dipping sauces that I found at the Asian market that were vegan friendly. I don't have the packages anymore, but um, you'll just have to look at which ones are vegan friendly. I think one was roasted sesame seed based and the other one I think was just a bunch of spices. And then after I had hot pot, I was craving something sweet, but I was actually really, really full. So I decided to have a little bit of fruit, although I bought one of these Asian pears and they were really good, but it's very water heavy and very crunchy. And so it just made me like super, super full. But you know what? It's fine. It was delicious. And honestly, like an hour later, I was feeling pretty good because I mostly ate vegetables and it was a good time. At seven, it was time for my weekly D&D &D session. I started streaming the D&D &D sessions on my Twitch channel. So if you wanna watch those, I stream those there. I don't really stream games as much slash ever. I might do it one day, but for now, it's just the D&D &D streams. I play with a few friends. So if you wanna tune in, there's VODs on the channel. We've done it for about three weeks now. So if you wanna watch, feel free to watch. It's a very chill session and we do a lot of role play and it's pretty fun. Also, if you wanna learn more about the characters that we play and the players that I'm playing with, you can check out the Squarespace website that I made down below. Speaking of which, let's talk about today's sponsor, Squarespace. I used Squarespace to make the website for our D&D group and it was so easy to pick a template, populate the drag and drop blocks with whatever photos and text that I wanted. I didn't need to code. I just shipped around whatever blocks I wanted. It was super easy. So if you got yourself a passion project and are looking to get it off the ground, one of the best ways to tell people about it is with a beautiful website. You can buy a domain straight from Squarespace, take advantage of their SEO tools and analytics. Squarespace is your all-in-one platform to bring your passion project to the next level. So get started today by going to squarespace.com slash vegan and use code vegan to get 10% off your first order. So I've been experimenting with these mooncakes lately. I don't have a recipe for this yet because I'm experimenting with a recipe, but the inside is filled with a mung bean paste that is sweetened and the outside is an ube shell. Now the ube color totally disappeared after I baked them, which is kind of a bummer, but whatever, it's fine. It was still a very good first try. If you're looking for these Hello Kitty molds, I can't really find the ones from the US Amazon shop, but I have one linked in my Canadian Amazon shop if you want this specific mold. Corn dog. They're gonna go in Kevin Bacon once he's done preheating. Oh yeah. We should probably give Kevin Bacon a wipe down. A little crispy. And it's time for the weekend. So I started my Saturday with a mooncake. You're supposed to wait like 24 hours before you eat these so that the moisture can sort of like seep into the shell, kind of meld together. But I didn't wait last night. So today I was having a little bit with coffee and the texture was indeed greatly improved even though it wasn't the full 24 hours. Today I decided to make sort of like a lazy Dalgona coffee. I used a little bit of sugar, some of the instant coffee, some soy milk, and then I wanted to froth it all together to kind of mix everything everything so I didn't have like a layer of coffee and then a layer of milk and it was very fluffy very good I would recommend it I added some ice cubes and then that was my bevy for the morning slash my breakfast to have with the mung bean mooncake then later for lunch I decided to make sort of a riff of the um, mayo corn udon that Lisa Kitahara made and then I added some extra veggies and stuff because nutrition slash deliciousness so I added to a boiling pot of water some frozen corn and the frozen udon which is vastly superior to 
the room temperature one. Holy moly, it is so much chewier and bouncier and so much better. Oh, what a good time. So in the wok, I have some shallots and the oyster mushroom. And then in another bowl, I'm mixing the sauce together, which consists of mayo, soy sauce, mushroom broth powder, and a little bit of garlic powder and white pepper. Um, instead of using butter, mostly because I forgot, I just use oil in the pan to go with the mushrooms. So, you know, not the end of the world. It didn't taste exactly the same. It wasn't as like buttery and salty, but it was still very good. So in the wok, I added some puffy tofu. Basically, these are leftovers from the hot pot greens. I've been finding that prepping for hot pot has led to me having excess veggies throughout the week, which means that I have less prep to do to make these quick lunches. And it's been a very good time. So once the noodles and the corn have cooked through, I add them to the wok with uh, a little bit of sauce and it's very good. Oh, I didn't realize there's snow peas in there. There's also snow peas for, you know, nutrition. So this was very tasty, very good. I've been really enjoying these frozen udon noodles. Holy moly. I added the rest of the sauce on top, mixed everything together, and it was a creamy, salty, umami good time. And then after I finished eating, I was craving something sweet. So I decided to try to make some sago sago. I listed the sort of instructions on my Instagram, but if you guys want a proper recipe for this, I can share one. I just need to measure it and actually probably write it out and take a photo, but that's fine. So these are tapioca pearls that are like mini tapioca that they're just not colored the way that the tapioca pearls and bubble tea are colored. So they're kind of similar. They kind of look like roe. It's kind of fun, but also weird. I mixed a coconut cream, like a sweetened coconut cream together, added the cooked tapioca, added grass jelly, and and yeah, this was very tasty. This is very similar to jie, which is like a Vietnamese pudding. A lot of times people will cut it also with regular milk. I decided to add a little bit of pandan to add a little bit of extra flavor. Funny enough, I initially had made this because I wanted to use up some of the coconut condensed milk, but then I completely forgot. And so I now still have leftover coconut condensed milk. Then for dinner, I just wasn't really that hungry. So I just had a little bit of the leftover Alfredo pasta and some dried mango as a snack. And now we're on the final day of eating. And because it's Sunday, I was like, yeah, I want coffee, but you know what I also want? I wanna have it as a dessert. So I made coffee, tapioca, jelly, sort of, I don't know. I don't know why I frothed it. I wasn't really thinking about it. I should have just left it as is, but I decided to froth it like Dalgona. Um, then I added grass jelly and then the tapioca that I had stored in the fridge with the coconut cream. Um, I also added a little bit of soy milk to kind of loosen up the tapioca that had absorbed all of the coconut cream. And this was a very decadent, very, good breakfast time. Um, again, would not recommend foaming it next time. It doesn't look like the greatest texture, but it was still very tasty and very fun to eat. And then for an actual nutritious breakfast, I heated up some more leftovers of the hot pot. I added a bunch of greens and then I added a few more noodles to the pot because deliciousness. So what's left over in the broth here is the yuba noodles. I added some fresh cut up mustard greens. And then in a separate pot, I decided to pan fry some of the mushrooms to get a little bit more flavor that way. And then I added some extra puffy tofu for deliciousness. And then that was my lunch. It was very, very good. Oh man, these udon noodles are the bee's knees. They're so, so, so tasty. Eddie made some buffalo tofu. He just kind of pan fried some tofu and tossed them in buffalo sauce. And I snuck a piece or two uh, as a little, little extra snack. And then later on in the day, I had a little bit, I had a mooncake just as a nice little snack. And then for dinner, I made some patin. If you've never heard of patin, it is a, Quebecois delicacy, basically. French fries, cheese curds, and then just drowned in gravy. It is a very, very good time. So if you want my recipe for gravy, I'll link it down below, it's on my blog. And I'm using these cheese curds from Veg Cheese. They're like local here in Ontario, but I think they, I think you can order online and I think they ship at least all across Ontario. I'm not sure, I'll link it down below. And then because I was extra hungry, I decided to also have a little snack plate of pate, melba toast, and cucumber. So to the pot for the gravy, I'm using some onions, some garlic, a lot of garlic, to be honest. I made a roux um, after cooking the onions in some vegan butter. I added some better than bouillon vegetarian broth base and then added some water to loosen that up. And that's the base of the gravy. And then to thicken up the gravy, 
not only do I use the roux, but I also use a cornstarch slurry. Once your broth has sort of like nicely thickened, the onions have cooked down. Um, I also added some Italian herbs and then I blended it all up before adding in the slurry. I kind of cook this until it gets like a nice thick texture the way I like it. For protein, I'm having another impossible patty with some of this cheese on top. Um, we only had one bun left, so Eddie ate the burger bun. And I just ate the burger by itself with a little bit of black pepper. I don't know why, I really like this sometimes, especially because I'm having the Melba toast on the side anyway. And it's just too much food for me otherwise. So this is a delicious time. I get some protein, I get some burger action, but without the bun. Now I'm assembling my poutine by adding some fries, the veg cheese curds, and so much gravy. Oh. This was actually very good. These cheese curds aren't like melty, like how you would imagine cheese curds to be. I actually haven't found like a vegan substitute for cheese curds yet that like really hit that like squeaky, chewy spot. I do miss cheese curds sometimes, but you know what? It's fine. And then for the last little snackle of the night, I decided to make some black sesame milk beverage. I don't really know. I pulled some of this sweetened condensed coconut milk. I hydrated some black sesame powder. I stirred that in there to get the sweetness. And then I added some ice and soy milk. And that was my sort of dessert latte drinky thing in the end. Um, I think in the future I might blend the sesame with the milk so that it gets really nicely finely blended. But this was very, very tasty and very good. I will be experimenting more with black sesame later. And that's everything that I ate in a week. I hope you enjoyed this very long video. If you want more of these, let me know. And I, I'll post a few of these recipes that I've been sort of like playing around with soon. Let me know if there's any ones that you want me to prioritize. I hope you are having a good week. I've been feeling pretty burnt out. And so this was just a week of me playing around with food because I've been burnt out. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a delicious day. Bye.